going on, everybody? Uh, we're just waiting for Pete North Shore Nos to join us. Um, hopefully any second now. Sorry, I'm tired. It's been a long weekend. A lot of things. Let's see what's going on here. Where are you at, Pete? So this one more time. Yeah, we got North Carolina in the house. There you are. Can you hear me, Pete? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I picked the wrong Wi-Fi. <laughs> hey, no problem. We got Pit Barrel in the back, I see. Yeah, exactly. I'm cooking. <laughs> I'm actually taking a break from that. Um, so I guess we'll start. Everybody, I'm Hamilton, Bear Smoke Barbecue. Pete, uh, North Shore Nosh. Um, we actually know each other previous to this. Yeah, uh, long time. A few centuries apart, but fraternity brothers. So they were quite best for the whole state. Oh. But, um, you know, we both have a love of food, and it's a, a little more well-versed and more broader ranges, especially with beer um, versus me. I'm a wine nerd and barbecue food, and, you know, Pete and I talked about doing this, so, Pete, I'll let you roll with it. It was your idea, so... Sure. Uh, well, uh, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Pete Vendoris, uh, founder and chief Nosh of North Shore Nosh. Um, I have other Noshes that I founded, but really what we're all about is eat, drink, savor. Um, we focus on low effort, low stress cooking, uh, tips, advice. Uh, we're food and beverage enthusiasts. Um, I spend a lot of my time cooking, being and really savoring life a little bit. Um, and I really wanted... Um, talk to you about barbecue, because I, I barbecue a lot, and um, you were kind enough to send me some stuff, so I actually have my blue basket of barbecue, <laughs> uh, so uh, what I want to know is, like, so you just launched, right, uh, not too yeah. long, yeah, middle of January was the official launch, yeah, so how, how, I mean, how long ago were you, like, thinking about doing this, of uh, launching a product, really didn't buy it to last. I've always cooked, barbecued for the last five, six years, but did a lot of charity stuff around Thanksgiving, did about 400 pounds of barbecue for people. Yeah. Um, I'm very particular, so I'd make my own sauce, make my own rubs. Uh, friends would have a party, 4th of July, and they're like, oh, we're going to order barbecue from so-and-so. I'm like, no. So I would just then bring all of a sudden, yeah. Then all of a sudden, like, I want to buy Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if you made that, if you sold that? sauces and rubs and tasting and sending it to people to try and yeah. it was um yeah it was kind of one of those things and then I got tired of the corporate world in December I quit my job and said screw this I'm gonna go have some fun and make barbecue sauce and rub and some other things oh and this is probably just business, so, so badly right now Lucy you are disgusting Well, I'm glad to know that doesn't change. So, <laughs> 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 
So, so that's <laughs> kind of how it started, and you know, I tinker around and make new stuff every once in a while, and you know, I take advice, I take suggestions. On you know, I did a, one of these lives two weeks ago, and they were talking about what's the best selling. And when I launched, I launched with four sauces. Yeah. It's really not just no mustard sauce. And I had sent some sample dust people, and one of them was like, "Hey, why is the mustard not on the website?" I'm like, oh, I don't like it. I'm not selling it. He's like, you idiot, that's my favorite. So I'm like, okay. So I threw the recipe out, so I had to start from scratch. In a week leading up to the Super Bowl, I made like 20 different versions. Yeah. And we tasted them at the Super Bowl party. I found one everybody loves, so that's what I went into production with, and now it's the best-selling sauce. Yeah, and that's, that's like pretty huge, right? Yeah. But sometimes you have to temper it, and you got to go, wait a minute, I can't whipsaw my production. I mean, there was a whole sauce that I tried. I, I just personally, I didn't like it. So, but then I, you realize it's not what I like, it's what you and the no it takes. And, you know, we all have different tastes. Some like the sweet, hot, vinegary, bitter, mustard taste. Um, no, and then, not much. I like your rub, but can you make it not as hot or not as sweet? Or I go, no. If you want something hot, get the hot rub. You get the sweet rub. You know, I can't tweak it for every person and you know I'm still a businessman at heart right? here good thing I want to talk about so like uh, a few months ago right I, I know a local coffee shop owner in town and I actually gave them like three samples of my sauce I made and one they they all had coffee in them you know so yeah. Um, you know, and then he was like, "Oh, I love this one. What's what's wrong with it? I hated that one. Man. <laughs> like, well, it's really bad." Um, but he wanted to kind of digging into it, and I'm like, "Wait a minute. I, I need a license. I need what kind of license? To what? What? I need a commercial kitchen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How many thousands of dollars I need to like fork up just to do like maybe I don't know twenty bottles of sauce for him?" And you can't produce 20 bottles. If you go to a commercial kitchen, you know, unless you're yeah. borrowing from But it's not going to work with a lot of the, the vocab you want to do. I just can't physically make 10,000 bottles. Jeez, and what a sweet thing. Yeah. as well. Um, I was talking to some local shops and they said that nobody's bringing out new product. Now, yeah. even groceries that you know, can't get their shelf stocked. And then also the production facility. Um, I'm well, I'm psyched that I worked with you, right? Yeah, it takes a while. It, after the winter, it's always a... After the winter, it's always a lot to clean up. size of this or you know yeah. it's very I'm very particular maybe it's a good thing maybe it's a bad thing but you know it's like any business you start it's your baby you want it to be right well there's a well because I you know I launched um, last year and it took me a year It's like I realized, like, if I was perfectionist, I'd never get anywhere. Yeah, but, you know, it's if you're creating a product, you have to be, whether it's physical or digital, but it has yeah. to be authentic. Like, as you were saying, you were trying things with, you know, you're doing what's authentic to you. And that's, yeah. that's what's important. It takes longer to grow a business that way. But, you know, I 
I'd rather be authentic than just come up with, you know, a pet rock, yeah. so to speak. Type, type yeah, you don't want to be, be fake. You're not going to be a faker. You know, it's just I mean, I'd like the money from a pet rock, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> there you go. Who would it, you know? Exactly. Uh, so, actually, uh, so I, uh, I unfortunately, well, fortunately for you, but unfortunately for me, I wiped out the Chipotle sauce. Um, but I do have, uh, is that number three? Is that the original? Okay. Yes. So, talk me through this sauce. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some sampling because I haven't used okay. it. Okay. You've had it for a while, so shake it first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's my take on a. I don't want to call it traditional. It's not North Carolina style. It's not Texas. It's it's just kind of a hot sauce. Yeah. Have some tomato in it, some ketchup, but not a ton. Vinegar, but not too much. You know, it's just kind of my little. It's thinner than most barbecue sauces you buy, but yeah. it doesn't have really much. I think there's corn syrup, but it's only ketchup. You know, all my sweeteners, you know, brown sugar or honey powder. It's almost like a steak sauce. Yeah. I put all that play on it. Obviously, I did carry the can camp. Which oh, Alex said so he's going to get it at XC you know, Lacrosse Company. Is sweet sauce? Is he? Good for him. Here's a sweet, Good car. Thinner, you know, molasses, honey base. Great for glazing ribs and chicken. Yeah. Um, I call it the cup what? sauce, you know, because it's for the kids. They love it. Um, yeah. And then the swine is our pure vinegar. You know, it's a vinegar-based North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina. Like, oh, that's whole pork, basically, right? Yeah, but it's a great mop for ribs or for chicken. Because it's, I add a lot more flavor to my, you know, traditional is vinegar, sugar, a little salt, pepper, red pepper flake, and that's about it. Yeah. I put a lot more flavor into mine. Yeah. So that was number, that was number one, right? I already wiped out number two, so let's go. And this is, that. Pepper, no tomato, bunch of seasonings, um. How long, did you take, how long did it take you to make, like, develop all this stuff? Like, like just uh, finalizing the recipe took six months. He's going to uh, try and... That's um, a lot of ketchup and sweet. I thought of making a mess in my kitchen, staying up till 3 in the morning, because I was working full-time at the time as well. So yeah. I worked, be with my kids till 7, 8 at night, and then start mm -hmm. making sauce at 9, and then go yeah. till 3, 4 in the morning. And <laughs> sell but it was fun yeah some of the stuff i had i made it was like it was killer but it was like it's gonna blow somebody's colon out if i sold it but <laughs> yeah I, I did a sauce i used to have one called sasquatch sauce which yeah. hey somebody else already has that brand but you know it had yeah. reaper in it, it had ghost pepper in it and you know some people like that but i mean you got to be careful with that thing it's very thin yeah it's thin yeah but a lot of layer, layers of flavor and depth. Well, it's not overwhelming on the vinegar, right? It's not yet. But that's the only liquid in it. The vinegar is like really tang, like with a tang yeah. to it. This is a little bit li like, like so when I, I what I liked about the your Chipotle sauce is a lot of people see Chipotle. I, and I like, think oh, mommy's going to die tonight. But actually, it, it was very, well. very I would shower. You're going to feel much better. You shower. Stinky. You're like, no. Let's put it on Oh, my God. I'm going to die. It's going to be real rough day tomorrow. Yeah, wait till, you, wait till you get up in the morning. Yeah. It's not going to be good. Yeah, I know what you mean. I can barely walk. All right, here's the sticky sweet, right? Sticky sweet, yeah, that's the sweeter, you know, honey molasses. And that's if you're diabetic, you know, make sure your insulin's around. <laughs> but but it's all natural. I try to stay as natural as possible. Yeah. You know, when, you know a lot of the things is I use high end Himalayan pink sea salt as my only salt in any of them. You know, yeah. Higher end peppers, higher end, you know, powder.
powders and peppers and purees. Just, I think it's a better quality and you get better flavor. Yeah, I, I know I made a couple sauces with corn syrup and this wasn't up to snuff. I, and then I replaced it with maple, which obviously we get a lot up here. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is maple is really expensive. Uh, unless you buy it in, you know, 25 gallon tubs. And, but it's not yeah. commercially viable, I think, by the way I wanted to make it. Uh, no, I mean, that's also with the honey. A lot of people use a honey substitute. Yeah. Partial honey and then corn syrup. I do a clover honey, which does oh, cost okay. more. You know, yeah. And it, but it's taste, consistency, and, you know, less chemicals in, the better. Yeah. Well, I think everybody was all, like, loves the all-natural stuff, right? It's, yeah. I still can't find a way to make ketchup. And there's yeah. no such thing as a good homemade ketchup. So you got to use something uh, that is, unfortunately, really too sweet, right? Yeah. Or, okay, too watery. Too watery, yeah, not thick yeah. enough. Mm. Oh, I like that. Mm. Stop. All right, so my next question is, all right, so in this rub you sent me, this is a kind of what I call the Dalmatian rub. Bear blend. Uh, SPG. All right. Yeah, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I um, I actually I used um, I used it on the potatoes tonight. So uh, oh, okay, I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, that's my default. Like if I'm cooking a steak, yeah, put that on your beef to go. It's it's a very traditional style rub. You know, yeah. a bunch of they call them SPGs everywhere or Spogos. Um, mine's just a little different. I use a bigger grain of salt, the pink salt. Yeah. Know, Two different type of onion powders instead of one. Just a basic salt and pepper with a little bit of garlic yeah. and onion. So, well, so like I, I notice what a lot of people do. Now this is more for the neophytes, but a lot of people overdo it when it put they put rubs on on beef. Yeah. Like it, honestly, I think the, the beef the beef flavor should really come through, right? Um, like. Like pork, like pork is different. You know, pork's got a little bit more flavor too, but not as much as beef. Chicken can be bland. I, I look at it that way. Like you stack. Okay, what has most flavor? All right, beef, beef flavor. Why overdo it with the rub? I mean, you don't want to be tasting rub. No, I mean a lot of it depends on the quality of the meat. I mean, a lot yeah. of us, especially people following this or in this community, you know, we we buy higher quality meats, but there's a lot of people that. You know, they went to the grocery store. You know, it's hit or miss. But yeah, your true brisket, especially you look at that. It's usually salt and pepper. They don't do the heavy barbecue rubs. Yeah. Because um, as you said, the beef has more flavor. It holds up against the well. It needs that salt. You know, to kind of break down the fat a little and that pepper to cut through the richness of the yeah. meat. Especially if it's a fatty piece. I mean, I'm a ribeye guy. I mean, it is what I like. Fatty meats. I'm a big boy. So you need yeah. something to break through that sweetness of the fat, and it just puts across. I mean, now I will be honest. I love a good Cajun coated steak, seared mm -hmm. nice and spicy. But yeah. that's you know once every once in a while. But usually it is the a salt and pepper blend. Yeah, so, exactly. And I use that for everything. I mean, I have a big. I won't call it a mason jar, but like a flatter mason jar next to my yeah. stove, and I just take <coughs> a piece of that and put in everything. It's my everyday seasoning. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I mean, this one, this one you gave me the the number one. Yep. It's been kind of my go-to actually. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm almost out, by the way, just so you know. But, uh, Is that it? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, you sent me these little baby bottles, and I'm almost you out. You sent me the little one. Uh, <laughs> well, because I I usually make my own rub. Like you like you started, you you made your own rubs. Um, you know, I used to buy the commercial rubs, and I. I didn't like, I didn't know, what I didn't like about them is that I didn't know how much, and I don't rub, because at least I could control the salt, you know, content. Um, but, I mean, this one, like, tastes exactly something I would make. I mean, it's fantastic. I love it. I mean, I would imagine, is this, like, your number one seller, or what? No, the Bear Blood is the number one selling spice. That's all yeah. Number one. Cause it's oh, really? Every day. You know, a lot of people, yeah. when you buy a barbecue rub, you don't yeah. know if it's sweet, if it's spicy. You know, there's, as you know, you go to the grocery store, there's lucky enough to have a barbecue. You 
go online, there's countless people like me who make a quality room. I mean, there's some yeah. other good ones out there. I'm not going to give them shameless plugs here, but there's a few other people's product I use that is a yeah. different profile than mine. But it's hit or miss. I remember buying stuff and going, taking a taste, going, okay, this stinks, put it in the trash, or this stinks, yeah. and I'll mix it and just create like some, you know, suicide. It's been edible for me. And I was like, I'm just wasting money. I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, um, well, Stubs and the yeah. um, wheat baby rice, and I'll combine it, and then I give it a little shot of sriracha, just to give it a little kick, and yeah. it somehow works. But I couldn't replicate it if I tried. It, it's one of those things that you just sort of like, I'm hungry, I want to throw shit into a pot and make a sauce, you know. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I made, I do a seasonal sauce, the miche sauce, which is a roasted red pepper sauce. Yeah. And I made it once. You know, this was well in the day now, eight months, nine months, cooking to impress my now girlfriend. Good boy. You know, made her lay on there, and I'm like, I gotta make this great sauce. So I whipped up this thing, and it made like a two ounce sauce, and served yeah. it. And she's like, God, this is the best sauce. I was like, yeah, I don't remember how I made it. <laughs> I'll, like, never, I'll never make this again. <laughs> so I kept trying and making it, making it, and I'd make batches and bring it. She's like, it's close, but not the same. It's and finally, after like yeah. two or three months, I got it right. And that's why I only do it, you know, every quarter I'll make a batch of 12 bucks. Because it is literally 90% roasted red peppers. Yeah. And, and that's expensive. It's time consuming. It's just yeah. a different process. So I'm just, I make it every once in a while. But yeah, it was one of those like, I don't know how I did this. You know, it was yeah. like, it was a fluke. So. I, I don't know about you, but I've, I've had moments where I've like served a meal my family, and I'm going, I, well, if you love this, I, I can't replicate it. <laughs> you better enjoy it, because I'll never make it again. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it's the same thing with sauce and, like, all the rubs, because, like, it's, a, it's all, there's a lot of different ingredients, right? It's, so, it's, you get different grains, you got different um, variability, especially with, um, if you use jalapenos or different peppers, yeah. it depends on the growing season, right? Oh, and, like, I use habaneros. Is it yellow or orange habaneros? What can you yeah. get? The flavor is different. The color is different. Um, yeah. It's even the same thing. You go to a, your favorite restaurant. You order the same thing every time. It's slightly different. They're not measuring that seasoning. They're not measuring that butter. They're going by yeah. the feel. You know, what you do is right. So, but it's close enough. You still like it. It's the same general taste. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I do that. I mean, I cook... I made a shrimp pasta out on the grill just kind of as an appetizer. I just threw stuff in a pan. Yeah. Make it exactly the same again. No way in hell. <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. So last night I made a I made a cassoulet, right? Which is a bean meat yeah. dish. French casserole. Dish. French, yeah. And it's uh, uh, detailed. But again, I'm throwing random scraps of meat in there that I had left over. And I couldn't replicate it if I tried. Yeah. You get all the meat that's left over, throw it in some tomato sauce, let it cook all day, and there's your gravy. <laughs> there you go. Like, I mean, yeah. that's why it's called Sunday gravy, you know? It's never the same, but it's great. Yeah, so, yeah. So now, I do you do, uh, yeah, do, so do you do competition barbecue? Do you do that? No. Yeah. I, I think my judge. Oh, all right. I've gone through all that. I've been judged one, but I like what I call real people. margarine and honey and don't fall off the bone not most so tender fall off the bone versus that firmer um, nobody I saw you I, I think it was over the summer practicing your competition thighs yeah trimming those and getting that skin and peeling it and, come on that's not reality we throw girls on thighs on there we like them you know a brisket we all have different preferences on fat level and how we trim it yeah um, Pork, you know, some people like it chopped, some people like it pulled slice. You know, you got the mud muscle. Yeah. Do it how you right. like it. You yeah. know, that's how but I, I, I mean, I was doing it, for me, I was just doing it just to, for awareness purposes, but it was, there was definitely some work to it. And uh, when I, 
when I was making those, you know, those chicken thighs, yeah. you know, and I made them in the cupcake, you know, tins and all that. And I'm going, I would never do this <laughs> around here. Are you kidding me? There's no way, you know. I mean, uh, up, up there, I mean, but it's, it's a lifestyle for people, but it's also you're there Thursday to Sunday. You're not sleeping. Not cheap. And, yeah. you know, a lot of us, yourself included, we have kids. You know, we spend time with them on the weekend. You know, yeah. to drive, you know, pull a haul a trailer, drive 12 hours, 8 hours to be somewhere on a Thursday night. That's not realistic for a lot of us. The South, it's a little easier. They're two hours away, an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, and you like losing, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> Don't go somewhere where you know you're not going to win. Um, I don't know. Well, you spend all that money, right? And you're you're out, what, you know, five hundred, a thousand bucks, and you didn't place. Spent days cooking. Who's gonna have to throw out? <laughs> well, you give it to people. You get to meet other people, which is great. Yeah. I mean, one thing you probably. Hey, so. Yes. I found a video recorder app, so. I'm recording the video now. He doesn't have it. It doesn't work that way. It's not that simple. Face and name's not on it, they can give you some recommendations. And you know, that's one thing. There's a lot of companies out there that have a thousand ambassadors. You know, anybody who wants to do it, they you know, send them some free Robin swag and say, Here you go, give somebody a coupon code, and you're good. That's fine. Yeah. My business model's a little different. I have right now 10, probably going to add two more and keep it small. You know, for yeah. a group of people that actually believe in the product, and there's a true business relationship. You know, we grow, they grow. Yeah. You know, before COVID hit, you know, my plan was, you know, over a month of summers to go visit every one of them, go hang out, spend the day with them, cooking, just in video chats, and to, yeah. you know, create a real bond and a relationship. You know, a lot of business today, there is no real relationships. They're fake relationships. Um, yeah. It is what it is. It's just the way the world is today. We're all distant. Um, yeah. It's like. Well, how many people from high school do you talk to? None. I moved. I went my own way. You know, yeah. it happens. And now with businesses, okay, you're not a client. You can't help me. Okay, we're going to the next guy. Because it's just numbers. Yeah. And I don't feel that way. You yeah. Know, you're, you're in a relationship based on tougher over the years. Sure, you could say. Well, yeah. And technology well, has done that. Yeah, well, it comes down. Well, a lot of times the relationship gets you in the door gets you to a certain spot but then it comes down to dollars and cents right they're not going to take a hometown discount because they like you uh, you know because they're going to go like well i'm going to take that deal because it's the best thing for my company and it's like you're a great guy but your deal sucks and it's like um you know there's not much i can do with that you know and it's like um and what i noticed like when i launched last year is that um you know the food and beverage community it's just like just like barbecue. Yeah, it's like you know I'll help you out. I'll you know I'll introduce you to a couple people, you know, and you know I love that. I, I think when you when you exhibit passion for what you do and they realize you're not a fake, you know you're not a Johnny Come Lately here. I think people actually respect that and they're gonna. Oh no, really? We'll help you out. Yeah, and it's the personal relationships. You, know, most you didn't have any wine, so. I know. No, you're fine. Gail, stop it. You were in a hot shower, too, so. What? You feel better now. Yeah. I'm trying to watch it. I didn't watch it yet. Yeah. You know, you know, your 
Friday night wine fights. You know, you're all double <laughs> videos. You like those, huh? You know, that stuff cracks me up because, you know, you know, unfortunately, most of our friends, people we know, are beer people. You're a beer person. I'm a, well, I'm, I'm also a wine guy, too, so. But I'm not beer at all. Like, I can't tell you the yeah. last time I had a beer. <laughs> yeah. Years or decades. And yeah. So I'm wine and tequila. Huh? to know these people I didn't know and you create those relationships like in the beer world and whiskeys yeah. and bourbons and all that stuff and you know whether it's a dessert cooking or Italian food or barbecue or you know yeah. plain up there too. and the lobster stuff and down you know New Orleans crawfish boils and you know the yeah. shrimp boils in the south I think it creates a sense of community you know we're older now we need to make friends a different way <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How do you friends with more money? <laughs> um, so, like, um, like before this COVID thing was uh, happened, um, I actually uh, we uh, Total Wine was actually going to do kind of a, a, a wine food uh, pairing class, and I was going to be preparing the food, and they were going to prepare the wine, and we were going to do a blind tasting for all the people. So, like. They, we would tell them a region, like, all right, we're going to Sicily, or we're going to, Port, you know, not Bordeaux, but, uh, you know, Rome. We, tell them, we wouldn't tell them exactly what they were drinking. They'd just say, why, well, this is a red Rome, you know, and and then at the end, we were going to, you know, un reveal these bottles that were probably, you know, less than $25 each. Really? And it was really about, like, hey, you don't have to have a lot of money to drink wine. I mean, you, you know, you and there's really good bottles of wine under $25. Now, again, right? So you can go up for under 10 believe it or not. But um, again, it's all palate driven, right? But a lot of people, they get surprised. They're like, wow, that was 20 bucks, really? That was really good. It's like, yeah, well, why don't you make friends with the wine guy? And tell them exactly what you're looking for, what's your budget, and they're going to give you something good because they want you to come back. That's the whole idea, right? Yeah, repeat, repeat business. And, you know, I'm a, as I said, a wine nerd, and people are always like, I can't afford expensive wines, or how do I know it's good? I go, listen, I can pour you a glass of a 25, a 50, a 150, a $1,000 bottle. I said 90% of people are going to say that $25 bottle is their favorite because that's the flavor yeah. profile they're used to. Unless you're yeah. extremely educated with that wine palette, you know, you're not going to pick out the higher end ones. And guess what? Just because it's not more expensive doesn't mean it's good. You're buying a name. No. Some of yeah. them you are purely buying a name, and it is $800 bottle of Porsche. You can buy um, a cork bottle for $1,000. bucks. You don't even know it. I, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Oops. Oops. Well, I don't know if you thought on this, but um, so like um, I have this thing called Ring of Honor, right? Which is wines that basically last for three to four weeks in a row. You know, consensus winners, they don't get knocked off. Um, and the one that um, we have in the in the cabinet now, um, I had to stock up before COVID, um, is the uh, the Thousand Elephants, right? So it's a Argentinian Chardonnay, right? Not what most people think of Chard, you know, from Argentina. It was six ninety nine, and I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> it's just, it's like a steal, you know? Like I don't, and it's like I think people have a just a bad snobs and all that stuff and I think it's a horrible a horrible thing to happen but I think you find bottles like that and you just latch on to them and just say hey I'm going to stock up on that that's really good stuff you know I mean, find what you like and stick to it it's like I tell people like I don't judge like my buddy brought me a bottle of wine last week it's like yeah the guy at Country Fest is a $250 bottle you know he gave it to me and I knew what it was and I took yeah. it graciously and, yeah. like, the next day I said, hey, I'm just going to be honest. I said, I hope you didn't pay 250 bucks for that. He's <laughs> like, no, why? And he 
so I said, okay. And he's like, well, I go, because it's a $32 bottle of wine. He goes, I paid 28 I said, okay. I just want to make sure you didn't get fooled by some guy. I bet so that it's not. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's that way with a lot of things. I mean, how much yeah. food out there is labeled as organic is truly not. Wagyu beef, you know. That's the much now. And this is like Toby beef hamburger or hot dog. Guess what? They don't. You know, yeah. That meat only comes yeah. from one province in Japan. You know, and it's all marketing. You know, so you gotta be careful. People fall for it. Um, find what you like. It doesn't mean yeah. I'm gonna like it or you're gonna like it. And you might not like what I like, but we're gonna take one brand of mustard, one brand of ketchup, one can brand of barbecue sauce, yeah. and we'd all be living in the Matrix. So. Yeah. I remember uh, when we were, my wife and I started doing this stuff, and I, you know, I talk about this before, it's, um, I think men and women, women have a different palate than men do, and they really pick up certain different things, and I don't think she has a hypersensitive palate, I just think she has a different palate, and she was picking up stuff, and I'm going, what the hell are you talking about, what are you nuts, you lost it? And she goes, no, and I'm like I love it. And she goes, no, no, it's the, the whatever anybody wants. It's up to them, not you. And I'm like, all right, you got a point. All right, I, I agree with you. <laughs> but yeah, we're men, we're stubborn. We don't. Love us. So it's, oh, 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 oh. We need to adjust. Yeah, but I have. I will say, she picks up um, definitely notes and flavors that I don't even pick up. I'm like. Wow, you got cherry out of that? I'm like, not even close. What the heck is that? You know, like. Oh, especially on wine. I'm like, no, nah, it's pretty good. The tannins aren't that strong. I'm happy. But like, if I knew a wine nerd, I'm like, I am, but I'm not a pretentious douche about it. You know? Yeah. I know what I like. I'm not going to make people feel stupid. And if I have to yeah. talk it, I will. But other than it's, I like it's fruity, it's jammy, it's, you know, acidic, it's earthy. That's a. You know, use the simple tones, and yeah, yeah. Mean, if people go into that. It's on anything you can do that. Do my class for being a, becoming a certified judge. Yeah, and we had this pork, and they're like, taste it, and we're all tasting. What's the profile of the flavors? Like, all I taste is salt and vinegar, <laughs> and like everyone's listing like forty-seven things off, and they're like, well, there's no sauce on it. I said, okay, but what's it injected with? vinegar and salt. I said, so I was right. Like, no, it has no salt. I said, you injected it and you cooked it. It's vinegar and salt. I'm like, yes. but people, yeah. are, you, know, you should have heard the stuff people are saying they tasted mustard, you know, cumin. I'm like, there's no seasoning in here. It's just, you get that tang of the vinegar with, the, you know, the pork fat, you know, in North Carolina, we're used to it. So we can taste that. So the thing with the wine, yeah. So the thing with the wine fight, um, um, it really comes. You like it? Would you drink some more of it? And if she drinks another sip, or I have another glass, I know we actually have a winner, basically. You know. And if I buy another bottle, there you go. That's even more validation, right? So it doesn't even matter, You're right? So like, we don't take tasting notes with that wine fight. I, I threw that out. I'm like, we're not doing that. No, no, no. I, I don't want to do any of that. And if there's still some wine at the end of the dinner, and eh, maybe you really didn't like it, you know. Oh, well, there's some other comments I can make, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> or do you gotta like gotta use a cup I mean, with it. I don't. Just don't pour the sediment into the glass. No, true. we've all made that bottle with friends or third, and it's someone's like, "Why is there dirt in my cup?" I'm like, "I'm sorry about that." <laughs> All right, so like, um, so with barbecue, let me get, let me get, I have had like Malbec, Syrah, um, some Chianti, I think those are the three that jump out at me that go well with barbecue, like Cabernet is too much, uh, it's too fruity, uh, um, I don't know, what, what do you run into, what do you like, like? I, I'm a red guy, I'm not a big white drinker, um, yeah. 
I like big bulk tabs of Bordeaux blends. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to respectfully disagree on the Cabernet. I think Cabernet goes great with anything peppery, with mm-hmm. that pepper flavor, with heat. Um, Depends on the Cabernet, though. Yeah, true. I mean, yeah. like anything. <laughs> Depends on the rub, too. But there's a company, I think it's Stuart. Sophie, what are you doing? They make a wine called Naughty Inky. Oh, Are Sophie. Yeah. And it's a red blend. Most Come on. Um, yeah. A little bit of Pinot or whatever. I don't know what the exact blend is. It's not broken down. But yeah. Also, it goes back to your palate. I know people that don't like tabs or don't like Merlots, don't like Pinots. Like, I was never a big Pinot person. I like bigger, bolder wines. Pinots yeah. are thinner. And then... You know, we were out in California around New Year's, over New Year's, and you know, had a red burgundy, you know, the French Pinot. And I was like, this has got to be one of the best ones I've ever had. Yeah. You know, a buddy yeah. bought it and shared it with us, so I'm like, okay, I, I really got to let these go. You know, so it comes out of your palate, changes. I was a yeah. brown liquor, whiskey and bourbons, scotch. I can't touch it. So I'm like, oh, it's disgusting. And now, you know, so it all changes, but, you know, find what you like. If you're having chicken, have white fish, have a nice yeah. plate. Have a good yeah. Sauvignon Blanc during the summer where it's nice and warm yeah. and you're sitting out. If you get a big, bold piece of meat, get that more lower cap, you know, a yeah. blend. You so, know. like, um, what was surprising to me, like, because I, I did a smoked goose, you know, barbecue. I did it on this thing. I did a smoked goose. Um, I was asking around. I'm like, you know what? This is going to be a really heavy dish, you know. Like, do I really want a big, bold cap, you know, the big ones? And uh, I said, you know what, let's do something different. And, and a uh, German Riesling. It was dry or sweet? It was awesome. It was, um, it was a spot lace, you know, spot lace. It was really good. It, it somehow cut through, the, cut through the fat and the acidity really well. And it was just, and it was, I was like, wow. And my eyes were, like, open. I'm like, this is pretty good. I, I was surprised, you know. I mean, you get a good, like, a nice duck dish. You could have a Sauvignon, you know, a Sauvignon, a real good Sauvignon Blanc, not a super fruity one. Stuff goes really well. I agree, Chardonnays. You know. Yeah, my wife, yeah. I'm just, it's just not my taste. I'm not, I mean, I'll drink some whites, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I mean, I like <laughs> whatever you like. I'm Who the hell cares? It's whatever you like, right? I'm stubborn. <laughs> I'm the hell of it. It's my mouth. I decide what goes in it, you know? <laughs> it's, you know, it's one of those things I've learned. Like, at first, I was like, nope, if you don't like my stuff, you're wrong. You know, I used to own two restaurants, and my, I was young. It was 09, and yeah. uh, somebody was complaining. I'm like, well, if you don't like it, leave. Versus sitting there going, wait, maybe they just have different tastes. Yeah. Don't be yeah. an ass. The palate, the palate police, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, but you're also... You know, like, you know, screw you, you know? Like, go to hell, you know? You're, Get out. you're on your high horse. It's your baby. It's this. But, you know, I was also young and dumb at that time. I'm just a little older and dumb now, so... <laughs> a, little, a little wiser, right? A slightly wiser. <laughs> Slight. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> you lost know, some people they might say I've gone down a little bit on that scale but you yeah. know they were like wait you quit your job right before the biggest recession in a century uh, <laughs> you can do it right yeah, yeah you know, why not I, I still have other things you know I have other business but it's you know you have to do what's best for you and whether it's cooking or lifestyle and yeah. you know, I think part of your stuff you were looking at your life and you were find, trying to find something. And I don't want to say yeah. a missing piece because that sounds horrible because you know, people have jobs, careers, families. It's just, yeah. there was that one little sliver of something that, God, this could just, I need to express myself a little and find a way to let out. Yeah, and, you know, exactly. I, I don't know what it was. I woke up, I don't know, I, my, forever, my the, the family was pushing me to, I don't know, open a bar you know, a brew pub, a restaurant, a roadside barbecue stand, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I go, well, that would, I don't know, the hours blow. I don't, 
I don't think I don't want to be a restaurant. And then it, I love to brew beer, but um, I don't wouldn't want to do it like four days of the week. It would it would be a grind after a while, you know. Be like, oh, you know, it's like I don't want something to turn into a grind. And for me, it was like, well, I'm cooking all the time anyway. I'm enjoying it. Let's have fun. I'm I'm drinking beer, brewing beer. I'm you know enjoying wine, and I do other things too. Uh, but like, why not do something different? You know, and like this is a long term view. So for me, it was like, okay, I still have my job, but on uh, weekends and nights, I'm doing this is what I'm doing anyway. So I might as well turn if I can get something that I think resonates with people. I think people are uh, cooking a lot more. They're like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I need help. I, <laughs> I'm, you know, like I'm used to dinty more in the can, you know, like I, you know. You know, like, you know, and I, I mean, that's why I did the knife thing was just for, um, I, I think people like see all these, you know, food network stuff and they get uh, probably intimidated by, you know, like I, I don't have 25 ingredients in my, I just have like salt, pepper and a couple of like herbs, you know, help me out. You know, it's like, well, I think a lot of people are like that. I think a lot of people are. You know, they, they, you know, everyone likes to go out to eat and go to restaurants for convenience. But uh, a lot of times they're like, well, I paid 120 bucks for the, you know, the family of four to go eat, and it sucked. Like, <laughs> I need something. I, <laughs> I mean, it's like, I can, it, it, well, the problem is now my kids are getting spoiled, and they're like, well, you can make that better. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm not cooking it, you know, like. Save me a night. Okay. But then you become judgmental. You go out to restaurants and you're judging what it looks like for you. You can make it look as pretty yeah. as you want. I care what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, but it's like, oh, this sauce is too buttery. This is too peppery. Or you saw. And that yeah. was one of the things when I got out of the restaurant business. is like, you know, like a year or two, every restaurant I went to, like in my head, I was being overly critical instead of enjoying it. Yeah. And, you know. It's, yeah. I have a bar, a restaurant. You know, you got kids still in the house. Yeah. Enjoy it. Um, people are like, are you going to open a bar? You're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll cater, maybe a food truck every once in a while. But yeah. know, as you said, the hours, you know, brewing beer, you know, long hours. Barbecue, you got to start the day before. You know, you're smoking yeah. briskets 12, 16 hours a day. You know, letting them rest for four hours. It's, you know, you got to start at lunch the day before for lunch the next day. Yeah, and it's a lot of time on your feet, right? It's a lot of time on your feet. And if you, I mean, I have a bad back, so for me, it's like I can't, I can't do that. You know, it's just, it wears you down. And if I was in my twenties, yeah, I could probably do it, but <laughs> not now. <laughs> no, it's, it's older. Our bodies change, you break down, but it's also a lifestyle choice. Some people love it. Yeah. Yeah. I do miss certain aspects of the restaurant business of talking to people, hanging out. I miss being yeah. in that kitchen under fire when you got 40 tickets lined up and you, know, yeah. you got to push the chef out of the way or your head cook and say, you know, take a step back, watch me do it. And you show them the old man still got I got to do some paperwork in the back. <laughs> I go through the initial rush. You go from here. You got some how it's going. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, it was like, you know, I, like, you was going, there's got to be something else I want to do, and I don't want to end my career doing what I'm doing now, and I'm like, all right, let's do this, you know, let's see what, where this goes, and, and here's the thing, if it doesn't work out for me, it, it's still a great hobby, I love it, I, I'm not, I'm never going to stop cooking, I'm never going to stop making beer and wine and going out and enjoying all this stuff, I mean, I mean, that was fun. I mean, it was a pain in the ass, but it was fun. You know? It's a French dish. What do you expect? <laughs> it's like, like, how much time do these people have in their hands? You know? <laughs> Metal grate, put meat on, cook. <laughs> sauce. You're good. Some seasoning, sauce. You know, French chicken. I mean, you got to roast it. You got to baste it. The butter, the wine, yeah. the bay leaf. Yeah. Every 10 minutes, baste. Step on a smoker or a grill, whatever you got. Yeah. Okay, if you're doing a long cook, every hour spritz it with a little vinegar, apple juice, water, yeah. whatever. 
And we're, yeah. we make, we're Americans. We dumb things down and make them easy for us. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. you know what? It's pretty good. Pretty damn good. And it's about as simple as it gets. We're, we're, we're innovative, right? We make it work, right? Exactly. Like, so, like, uh, I have this thing where I do where uh, I told this to a couple people and they're like, just like, I don't know, horror maybe because they're pur- purists. But I say, you know what I do? I, I put my pulled pork in here for three back at night. I pull it out at like midnight when it's about, you know, and I'm like, and then I, I stick it in the oven at 225, wrap Let it up, it go. <laughs> go to sleep, and I wake up, and I'm like, it works, you know, why not? And the flavor's still there, so. I mean, because if you look at depending on the meat, two to five hours is all the smoke you can take. Yeah, it gets like 140 degrees, and it won't take any more. Yeah. You can't get any more smoke, so I mean, I don't know about the restaurants. I mean, I didn't have barbecue restaurants, but I do specials. I do something like that and just put in the oven overnight at 220. You know, yeah. same thing. Just let it go with ribs also, six hours. Yeah. Just It's easier because, you know, a lot of people who want to have something during the week, they can't manage during the day. they got to work. You yeah. Know, that's why all these crock pots and instant cookers – have gotten so famous that you dump it in the night before that morning, and that night when you get home, it's good. And yeah. our lifestyles have changed. Yeah. 50 years ago, there was usually a person at home who cooked the meals and a person at work. Now it's, you know, two income families, most of them, and people yeah. don't have that time. We're not working nine to five anymore. I don't know anybody yeah. that works nine to five. I never have in my oh. life. Um, I never have. So our time to do those things has changed. We're weekend warriors now. You know, whether, I mean, you know, the cooker you got. A half a dozen, a dozen more brands out there. 55-gallon drum, pretty simple. You it's know, pretty straightforward. You yep. know, and the I, Yoder's going to pellet smokers mainly now versus offsets. You know, right. Traeger started that trend, and, you know, there's yeah. a million other companies. Pit Boss. And, you know, Weber. I, I yeah, just saw that. Yeah, yeah. so like, whatever they called so it. the one I had before this was a Brinkman, and yeah. it was this four-foot beast, and uh, management at a, at a certain point, it wasn't really cooking anymore, it was like, yeah, I'm watching the temperature, you know, I got the software going, and I'm like, and I'm like a stress case for nine hours, and I'm like, you know, when I rusted out, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I got to make my life a little bit easier, and uh, I did a lot of research. I almost got a uh, Weber smoking. I'm digging shit with it. For the money, I mean, for the money, it's great. I mean, I have a you know massive offset. You know, the firebox is thirty two inches. I mean, oh, so you want to like talk about manual right? It's like, how much wood does this thing need to go through to, to do it? Yeah. I'm a smoker. I got a Humphreys, which is, you know, a bottom-fed smoker with a water plate. Yeah. Um, as I said, a Traeger. I got a. You know, yeah. I like playing with them all, but yeah. it's like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna pound my chest and get big wood smoke. I go after like a half a dozen cooks. I'm like, if a child every 30 minutes to an hour out there, you'll babysit him. Just yeah, you're chucking, in, you're chucking in wood. You're chucking in wood every 30 minutes, and you're like, hey, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, don't do this I mean, at all. it's great presentation. It looks good, but I mean, the barrels, I mean, all these and egg, whether it's Green Egg or, you know, there's so many other companies that have, you know, Kamado Joe's, those style cookers. Well, you know, for 12 hours. You put your charcoal in, you set, once you get tuned into your temp, you walk away for 10 hours. You know, right. the people with barrel cookers, the same thing. I'm going to make it take 12 hours. Nah, it's about five or six, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the pellet smokers, however big your tank is. You know, your pellet... It's all personal preference, but, you know, as long yeah. as people enjoy it, and, you know, I've come to figure out, like, why would somebody cook on that? And then you cook with them all, you go, oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. I so, so here's a good story. So, like, when I first got the Brinkman, right? Okay, just so you know, five minutes before they show the song. No, I know. So, I, okay. last story. So, yeah. I got this big Brinkman, right? And, you know, I, it was a, a pulled pork, big, big one, right? So, I'm nine hours. I'm, you know, 
know, I'm chucking this. I'm sitting. I'm sitting by the thing. I'm chucking it full of wood. And of course, I'm drinking beer. And by night, end of nine hours, I, I don't know. Oh, I, I'm fine. <laughs> you can't like, enjoy this. And, and my family was like, "What's for dinner?" I'm like, "Ah." Well, the worst is it's raining when you're doing that. You know, you're beautiful. And then you can't. <laughs> right. It goes up and down. It spikes, you know. So it's yeah. like it's, it spikes, goes down. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it wears you. It takes a lot out of you when you're cooking that style. It's yeah. fun, but as you said, off your dog. Yeah, mine is just in here. Not to one dog. There's many. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all. Bring people together, have fun, the old-fashioned, I don't want to say neighborhood barbecue because neighborhoods are too big now. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't have any. <laughs> um, I moved to the other house. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, that's what it is. It's, you know, camaraderie, having fun. I mean, look at this. We have, I don't know the last time we saw it. Oh. Twenty. Talked. Twenty. Ten. Twenty years. Nah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe Shane's funeral. I don't know. Maybe Could twenty. Yeah. And yeah. You know, well, Shane's funeral is probably yeah. That was yeah, probably it. That was ten years ago this year. Yeah. October. Yeah. Okay. It brought us back together. I started working on our stuff, and I did the yeah. barbecue, and we started texting again, and it's that's right, know, man. And it's I love this stuff. I'm going to be using it. You know, I'm using it, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, we got three minutes left, and you know, I'm gonna be yep. a shame about Nate's on here. Uh, he's yep. one of my ambassadors, he's a veteran. We do like yep. to support the veteran. Yeah, um, if you are a veteran, you know, the two people that are left on here, we have a solid four, and you know, hopefully, this COVID thing will be over, and we can all have some sense of normalcy. and you know, I can start yep. traveling and visiting and tormenting people as they cook. So. Yep, man. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I'm here to help. I'll, I'll come torment you, too. Yep. Massachusetts is not known for barbecue, but I'll, I'll make my own dent right here. There was a place in Waltham that had great barbecue. Was it Iguana Barbecue? Oh. Uh, the this blue ribbon barbecue. Yeah, this rusty can barbecue up in Newburyport. Actually, supposedly it's good. I don't know. I Every time I... Uh, Here's a, I, I took my kids to uh, Rodney Scott's in uh, Charleston, and they were, like, telling me, well, your your food's better. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, come on. They're like, I said, I think this is pretty good. And they're like, oh, no, no, yours is better. I'm like, uh. I'm well, like, I don't and need. it's also what they like. They're used to it. You yeah, they're probably, they were, it was the same kind of vinegar base that they put my pulled pork anyway, so I don't know what yeah. they were talking about, but. Oh, well. As long as you didn't get the white mayonnaise sauce in South Carolina, you're good. Oh, uh, I've done the uh, barbecue. Oh. Uh, it's weird. It's a little white tangy it's mayonnaise. Not, it's mayonnaise and vinegar. 